morning. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. We have uh, several announcements that are in the bulletin, and most of them are routine, but I will call to your attention on number two. Tomorrow evening, October 31st, 5 to 7, we'll have trunk or treat. Then we're going to have uh, uh, chili cooking in the fellowship hall and, and some other sweets and things that y'all want to bring. And uh, it's really always uh, a really fun time. Uh, down in the fellowship hall and then also up here with all the trunk or treat and the kids and, and <coughs> Mr. Bill, I was looking out and didn't see him. Mr. Bill said he's bringing in his snake. So we're looking forward to the snake. <laughs> so let me start. <laughs> no, and, and I think Jacob asked him, didn't, didn't you ask him? He said you want to see the, the snake. Uh, <coughs> and for anybody who's watching the uh, uh, we got to tell them what it is. It's, a, it's not a real snake. It's dead. Been dead for years. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, and then the other one that's not routine is the luncheon on the 13th. Brother Ron, I have to say about that. Uh, I received a text last night. This is very still uh, thing. I've just been helping, but. Anyway, we received a text that will be 22 first responders uh, right. on that Sunday. And so just kind of want to make sure it doesn't slip up on folks because, uh, you know, I hope we'll all show up to, to honor them who are in town for that time. And uh, as the thing said, the meat and the vegetables will be catered, but we're asking church members to bring cider on, desserts, tea, or slaw. Uh, whatever they want to of that, and we'll we start at 12, yeah, and we will start at 12, 30. But uh, 22 is a great number, and so I, she said they were very excited to, to come. So, you know, I just hope that they'll all show up and show out, and I'm welcome to them. I did invite them to the 10, 30, so if they wanted to come. Isn't there a sign-up sheet so we don't have... We can do one. And you know, you've always heard when the cats are away, the mice will play. Well, so y'all know that that's not a Sunday to do that because you know, I'm going to be, we're going to be gone. I've got to do some continuing ed that day and so, or that week. And so we're going to be out of town. But so you'll, you'll love who you're going to hear. Uh, Miss Joyce, David Wilkerson's coming. I knew you'd like that. And everybody else will too. Uh, he's, he's one of, uh, as people would say, he's one of our own. So I know y'all will enjoy hearing Brother David. Uh, David Wilkerson has been a United Methodist pastor for a lot of years, and, and he decided he was going to retire again uh, this last year. So he's, he's retired for how, how many times that makes it that he's retired. <laughs> but, but anyway, but he's going to come to us, and I'm so glad that y'all are going to get to hear him and that I get to hear him on the Internet. So y'all please record it so I can... And listen to it. Uh, um, but anyway, but then at 12:30, y'all have the uh, the luncheon for the first responders here downstairs. Are there any other announcements? Um, Samaritan's first is coming up. Uh, Thank you. Good one. I will move those out for you before the first responders luncheon, so they won't see all that out there. But. Um, I was going to say we did not order, but I'll clarify and say I did not order. The box is in time. Um, if you have extra shoe boxes or run across the plastic shoe boxes and want to purchase some to donate for Samaritan's Purse, that you'll bring them up here and we'll stick them into the little uh, room right here where the camera is. Because uh, I don't know that we have enough boxes. Any other announcements? Will you stand as we read our faith together? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, descended into heaven, and sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And we have seen him come and judge us to wait in the day. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
speaking of Jack, did y'all know that Jack's written about? I mean, he's written a couple of books at least on, on what he went through with all the cancer and such. So, um, look those up there on Amazon. Just a, interesting. Anyone else? Unspoken request. Also, be praying for Mrs. Diet. Um, her foot's not doing well at all. Uh, it, it, it's just she's kind of it's it's really going it's digressing rather than progressing. So you gotta pray for her and check. Her. Let's go to one. Lord God, I pray for Sunny and Sweet and Jen. We pray for Jack Mayad and we pray for Miss Dodd. And Lord, I pray for uh, our church. And Lord, I thank you so much that Miss Joyce is able to be here. And Lord, I thank you that she's gotten better. And Lord, we, we thank you for all of the other people that are here today. And, and Lord God, for the other miracles that we've seen. And, and Lord, I, I pray that you will uh, heal Miss Dodd's foot. Lord, that we'll just see a miracle. And Lord, for others that are that are sick and have been able to be with us, oh Lord. And we pray for unspoken requests. And we pray for our country and for Israel and for uh, the um, diesel issue and for the uh, the issues that are going on in Ukraine. And, and Lord God, I pray that you will touch our community. And God, we love you so much. I praise you and thank you in all things, and I pray for our denomination. And, and Lord, we pray that you will uh, help us to stay strong in your word. And Lord, that we'll stay encouraged by your presence. And as you taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of God. Amen. <clears throat> Let's take a red hymn again as we stand and sing hymn number 572, Blessed Assurance. Let's sing all three verses. <laughs>
to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians 1. Sylvanius and Timothy. To the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, we give thanks to God always for you, all making mention of you in our prayers. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of our God and Father, knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. And you become followers and you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith towards God has gone out so that we do not need to say anything. For they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and the true God and to wait on His Son from heaven who has raised us, from, who, is, he, who He also raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. The Word of God. The title of this morning's message, and I don't normally have a title, but this morning's title is Let It Be Said of You. Now, you know, whenever you're about to leave for a long trip, and you're telling somebody something, you let the last thing you say on the way out the door be what's the most important, right? Isn't that pretty well what we do? Well, we need to make sure that we finish well also in our life. Many times people start well because they were little and they gave their lives to Jesus and they were doing really good. And it's just like Paul says in his epistle. He says, you did run well. That's meaning you were doing good. Who messed with you? Who messed you up? You were doing so good to start with. What happened? And then my answer would be, life. Life happens. You know, kind of like we're going about to get into the holidays, right? Well, after the holidays comes January. And if you flip on that TV, every other commercial is going to either be some kind of apparatus to help you get in shape, to help you lose weight, and then every other one after that is going to be some kind of new pill that they've got that's going to either help you to lose weight or it's going to be the Nutrisystem commercial. And then people make all these New Year's resolutions. Oh, we're going to get in shape this year. We're going to do it. And they stick to it for just about a month or two. And then you go down there to the Goodwill store and you'll find those apparatuses that they said, call now. And the price will only be $39.95 in, in 1,700 easy payments. Isn't that right there, those, you know? You're going to be paying for it from here on out. But it's just seven, but it's just $39.95 a month. And you'll find those apparatuses down there at the Goodwill store for 50 bucks. 
one easy payment. Uh, but people start out well, but then they just kind of slough off, right? And, and this life happens. So we need to make sure that we finish well. I'm going to tell you two stories of, 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 of a person. So it's actually three people. Two stories. The first story is it was a man who he went to church and people would always say this about him. Oh, he's such a sweet man. Oh, I just love him. But then, if you listen to more of the stories, they'd say, oh, well, you know, he's, he's real wealthy and he always tells people just how much money he made. And say, well, that's great. Or what's he do with it? And then you find out how, and then you find out more of the story. How he made the money. They said that he cheated people. And you go, wow, that sounds terrible. And then when he'd come to church, he'd put a $5 bill in the plate, whether he needed to or not. So he made a lot of money, but he only spent it on himself. And this is where I always remember 4-H, Miss Mary Welch, standing in one of those meetings. And some of y'all said, let's see, let me think who I, Miss Carolyn said that when she was a little girl, Mary Welch did her 4-H, just like Joy says when Joy was a little girl. Mary Welch did her 4-H too. So this lady is, uh, she's, I, I don't remember how old she is. Is she 83 or 4? She doesn't mind. She doesn't mind me telling it. And I said, well, don't tell it. Nobody knows. She said, I'm proud of my age. She's 82. Anyway, Miss Mary would say this. She'd say, you have two hands. One's for helping yourself and one's for helping others. And so we're supposed to take the resources that we have. And we're supposed to help ourselves, sure. But with the other parts of it, we're supposed to help others. And so, uh, make sure that it's said of you that you finished well. Now let me tell you another story. And this one has nothing to do with money. This has to do with people living for Jesus. Or not living for Jesus. There were two men, and this happened in the law. So it's not like this is some way off story. And, and I'll tell you one of them's connection. There's a lady that's from that area named Miss Sylvia. And Miss Sylvia's brother is one of these people. Whenever he, he had some kind of cancer of the liver, there were two men, they were across the hall from each other. Both of them had cancer of the liver. Miss Sylvia's brother, had cancer of the liver. And while he was in that severe pain, you know what he would do the whole time? He was quoting scripture. And that's how he made it through. And that was, and he kept doing that until he could no longer talk. And then pretty soon he went on home to glory. Across the hall, there was another fellow who had cancer of the liver. You might say, well, I thought the first one had cancer. He did too. Both of them had the same prognosis. But this one, instead of quoting scripture, he just cussed every breath. Who finished well? What would be said of them? I don't know about you, but I would love to be like that man that quoted scripture. Wouldn't you? That you memorize so much of it that you were just quoting scripture whenever you're in pain. Thanks be to God. Let it be said of us that we finished well. Now what is this passage telling us here in 1 Thessalonians? And you can just about follow it down line for line as I go through, but I'm not going to say, oh, and in chapter 2, I mean chapter 1, verse 2, oh, in verse 3, oh, in verse 4, I'm just going to go on through. So first of all, I believe that Paul said, hey, I didn't come to you in word only, but we came to you in the Holy Ghost and power, and because the power of God and the power of the Holy Ghost was on us, you knew what manner of people that we were. Because the Lord was with us. And then all of a sudden, you begin to, it began to rub off on you. Have you ever had something in your hand uh, a big bucket. Oh, I'm so glad I remember this is a hilarious story. 
You ever had a big bucket and it was so full that it sloshed and it got on somebody? Well, that's the way the Holy Spirit water needs to be in us. That the Lord's water is in us and it's so full that we're toting it around. And as we tote it around, we're accidentally just sloshing it on people and that God's getting on them. Okay? Now, here's my funny story. I haven't thought about this in 25 years. The kids, nobody, they had not heard this story. It's hysterical. We're on a mission trip. And I'm a little far away. I'm probably about, I'm not a little far away. I'm John Clayton's age. So I'm about 15 years old. And there was this girl that I wanted to impress. And, uh, and so there was this uh, big uh, jug of, I don't know, some big five-gallon jugs like y'all have with the football team, right, Andrew? You probably know many of them. All right. And then just like Andrew, I, well, I'm going to show you I'm strong. And, you know, right? You know, that's what you do. Anyway, and so I pick it up. But I didn't realize on this one, you can't pick it up by the lid. Well, I picked it up by the handle on top. And I'm holding it. It's full of red coupon in it. And it got all over the other girl. <laughs> I mean, it's like... <laughs> I didn't impress her that day. <laughs> she would have never talk to me. <laughs> but anyway, but you know that we need to be so full of God's presence in that whenever we have that bucket of water that it just sloshes on people. In, in that case, it covered her from head down. It was off. Anyway, uh, we need to make sure that we're showing God's word to them in the way that we live. And by that Holy Spirit and power. And that's what Paul was saying that he had done when he came to him. And he said, and then they quit serving those idols. And they were no longer talking about things like, oh, well, tomorrow we've got to go burn incense to that idol. Instead, they're talking about, oh, look up at that cloud. Any moment, we can be looking up and we can see the Lord Jesus coming in those clouds of glory and singing when the roll is called of God. Anytime. And that's what their new conversation has become. Our conversations will even change when we get on fire for Jesus. Our thoughts change because we're no longer thinking on those other things, but we're thinking on the things that the Lord Jesus wants us to think on. The mind of Christ. He then goes on and he says, And from this you sounded forth. Now, when it said sounded forth, you know what I begin to think of? I thought about a megaphone and somebody shouting about Jesus. So I'm reminded of being down in New Orleans and there's a man on a megaphone and he's saying, the time is drawing nigh. He was the best street preacher I think I ever heard. And he was out there and he wasn't, uh, he wasn't beating people on the head of the Bible. But he was given the message saying you need to turn. The time is drawing nigh. It's not going to be very long before the Lord Jesus returns. Is your heart right with him? You better be thinking about other things. Now then this is what I begin to also think about. There's a passage in Matthew chapter 10 verse 27. And it says this, What I tell you in the dark, speak it in the light. What you hear in the ear, speak it from the housetop. Now remember in Jerusalem, there was just a little old alley between the houses. So a house might be as close as that pew to that pew. And then if you were to say, have you, how many times have you all gone to the kitchen and you gathered your meal and you say, you know, it's so beautiful outside. Let's take our food outside today to eat. And so what that means is y'all would be going up to the rooftop. And then if y'all were to say that, that means that y'all would be going up to the rooftop. And remember, if your houses are that close together and you look up across the way, you see your neighbor over there and you say, oh, well, they had the same idea. So we're all eating on the rooftop. 
And while you're up there, you might go over there and say, oh, let me tell you, St. Paul came today. And let me tell you about the message of this Jesus. He is God's Messiah. And so they were shouting it from the rooftops. They were telling others, all their neighbors, all their friends, about the Lord Jesus Christ and what He had done in their lives and how, how you know, that they, they may have had problems in their marriage, but now, because of Jesus, things have changed. They may have had problems with, with drinking. They may have had problems with uh, doing things that they shouldn't be doing. But now, because of Jesus, all of those things have changed. And they're not the same person that they used to be. And you might be sitting here today and say, but you know what? I, I've been saved for many years, but you know, I, I've still got problems and I haven't seen those changes take place in my life. What's wrong with me? You know what? Like the sweet little song the children sing. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon, the stars, the sun, and the earth, and Jupiter, and Mars. How loving and precious he must be because he's still working. And you know what? He's going to still be working with you and working with you until that day when he finally calls us home. But up until that day, we remember that we need to run well. Paul also says in the past, he says, remember, I think I quoted this a minute ago, you need to run well. What happened? Who messed with you? What caused you to stumble? We need to make sure that if we do stumble, that we get back up. I heard somebody say this week, they said that their mama taught them, this boy said, I wasn't any good in baseball, and that's not too good in Lauderdale County to not be good at baseball. He said, but I remember feeling like I was a failure. And he said, but I remember driving home, and I was in the back seat, and he said, my mama looked in the rear view mirror, and she looked at me. And I'm going to call his name John because he didn't tell me it's okay to tell the story. So I'll, I'll change the name. And he said, she said, John, now listen to me. Don't you ever give up. Don't ever give up. And that's what we need to remember in our Christian walk. Don't ever give up. Jesus isn't giving up on you. Don't you give up either. He's still working. He's still working. Now, you know, with this, this message that Paul's bringing to the church at Thessalonica, Thessalonica, that's the way we pronounce it in America, but the way they pronounce it is Thessaloniki. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, but the, what he's trying to bring to them is this message of loving God and loving each other. There's a song that says that, and, and it, it goes like this. It says, loving God, loving each other, making music with my friends, loving God, loving each other, and the story never ends. And we need to make sure that that story does not end, that we continually love God and love others. Now, how does that look when we leave this place, when we leave here this morning, from Sunday morning? It means that we go forth from this place, and to love God, we've got to soak ourselves in the Word this week. Because we're going to have life. Life's going to happen, right? Life is going to happen, and, and we're going to see a lot of other things, and we're going to be involved, and we're going to get busy. We're going to get really, really busy. Now, I could call some names out there. Some of y'all I know are really busy people. And that, it, and that you were like, oh, praise the Lord, we just made it to church this morning. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And you know what? It is going to be okay. But this week, whenever you get in that busyness, soak yourself in the Word. You might say, but Brother Ron, I just don't know how I'm going to find time. Let me show y'all something here. This is a major help to me. See this one right here? It's what it's called. It's this one. It says the Holy Bible now. And what I like about it is, first of all, 
it'll remind you of the church because a few times a day, I think y'all heard it last week. Did y'all hear my bells going off? It sounds like the chimes. All right. Well, it goes off, and when I hear that, I go, oh, that reminds me of our steeple. And then, all right, so then it gives you a Bible verse in there, and then if you hit Bible, you can find whatever chapter you want to hear or read, and then you do that. Press that button, and it'll start reading it to you. And then when it gets done with one chapter, it moves on to the next chapter, and it reads that. And so you'll be able to hear it. So you might say, well, I just don't have time to listen to the Bible. Well, let me tell you where you do have to go. Everybody take a shower every day. If you got a waterproof thing, you know what I do? Mr. Donald made sure they put a niche in the shower. This thing fits right up in that niche and you can press play and you can listen to your Bible in the shower. You can listen to your Bible while you're getting ready. As you're putting stuff in the coffee or the cocoa or tea or whatever you drink in the morning, while you're doing that, you could be listening to a chapter of the Bible. You might go, well, I'm not really paying attention. I want to be able to sit down and, okay, do that later too, if you have time to do that. But if you don't have time, if you're just getting in and out of the car, just turn it on, set it on the dash, listen to it while you're going to work. And then when you get there, you've already heard two or three chapters of the Bible and you... You're, you're getting there. We're making it. And you might have time, that luxury of getting to sit down. I don't ever get to sit down and really enjoy the coffee. I just have to take it on the go and get it on the go. And so, maybe that'll be the way you do it. We have to soak ourselves in God's Word. And then just fill yourself up with God and just soak in it and, and let God ooze. Or slosh, like the, my little story. Make sure you slosh Jesus on others. Now, so that's loving God. Now, how do we love others? Now, this is the other piece to this. And it's really a whole lot now of talking about how we can help others and others' problems. Did you know there are a lot of people who have self-esteem issues? People who have self-worth issues. And you don't know who they are because they mask them. I've seen it so many times as a pastor. People who are really weak will try to pretend to be really strong. People who were told they were ugly will try to overcompensate and do everything they can to overbeautify themselves. People who have self-esteem issues with being told they were stupid Many times they get lots and lots of education. So you might think, well, why would they need to be told that they're doing a good job, but they're so-and-so. They've got these degrees. They've got that amount of money. Or the person who was really poor when they were a child. They grow up and they just want to make money, 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 money. So they're overcompensating. So these people have these self-esteem issues. These people have self-worth issues. And we don't even know who they are many times. Because they would never tell you. But you know what I heard even in recent weeks? I heard of one person say, and Brother Ron, I just felt thrown away. That's not the first time I've heard that phrase used. And both of these people don't know each other. But I heard it by somebody else. And I was like, wow. But both of these people have self-esteem issues. And they need to be encouraged. They need a card. They need to be loved. And you know what? We can do that. This our, our sweet little soup group. It's next week, right? That's one way to show love. Some of you can take meals or food or cook loaves of bread and take it to people. Showing love. But phone calls. I remember whenever I was sick, Mr. Donald was going to say, but Ron, are you okay? I'm like, well, yeah, fine. Well, I just wanted to make sure, because you got COVID, and I just wanted you to know we care about you. Phone calls. So you might say, well, I just can't do anything anymore. Oh, yeah, there was a lot we can do. Write letters, just a quick little note. It doesn't even have to be a store-bought letter. I've seen people just fold paper, draw a picture on it, uh, 
write a little note say, I care about you. Here's a Bible verse. So put it in my hand. What about this? If they remember if they have self-worth on that, so they think they're stupid. Think how helpful it would be if you say, hey, can you help me with this? I know this is your expertise. Can you tell me what your opinion is on? Let them know that their opinion matters. People need those kind of things. You ever been around people who had the gift of edification? I, those kind of people make you feel so good about yourself. I ran into one of these people the other day, and uh, and I gave him some bad advice. I have to admit that, and I'm, I'm very sorry for that, but I'll go back and tell him. When it was, he had this, he, it was, he was one of these people who, he makes you feel good about you. And so I told him, I said, you know, you ought to run for office. You could be, a, I mean, a good politician. Uh, and I shouldn't have told him that. You know what I should have told him? Make sure that you use that for Jesus, that gift of edification that you got. And, so the, and then, you know, we may say, well, I don't have that gift. A lot of times I love people the wrong way, but I don't mean to. Well, then just do your best. To be kind to people and to make sure that they leave your presence feeling good about themselves. Find a way to do that if you're able. Because people need encouragement. Sometimes, I even had this one time. There was one situation where I knew nothing else to say to the family. They called me several times a day because they needed encouragement. They needed something. I, I, they were looking for something. And they thought I had it to give to them. And I had told them all I knew to say, everything I had learned in psychology classes and in seminary and in counseling and in CPE, but I had nothing else to tell them. I had told them everything I knew that the Lord had shown me, nothing else to say. I felt like I was useless. But they kept calling several times a day. So you know what I finally realized? What do I still have? What resources do I have left to give them that I haven't given them and that I'm not repeating myself? The Bible and prayer. And see what I started doing when they called? Hit go, you know, when you turn it on. Hello. And he'd say hello. I'd say, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I'd start reading it. And when I got to the end of that chapter, if I didn't feel like that was enough, I'd read chapter 3. And then when I got done, I'd say, I'd, I'd stop and I'd listen. And he'd say, oh, thank you, Brother Ron. That's just what I needed. And then the next time he'd call, I'd do the same thing. Or if I didn't have a Bible in front of me and I answered the phone, hello, hello. And I'd say, let's pray. And I didn't ask him what's going on. We didn't have a conversation. I just began to pray again. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And when I'd say, Amen, you know what he'd say? Thank you, Brother Ron. That's just what I needed. Bye-bye. So maybe we need to get out of the way and let God speak. And so you may not even have to know the right answer. And then sometimes, sometimes think about this. Have you ever been in a situation and they had a family member die or they're going through something that's so bad that you, you want to be there with them, but you don't even know what to say to them. This is the initial talk. You don't have a clue because you can't say, oh, I've been there. You can't say, oh, I'm so sorry for you. You realize that nothing you can say is going to be helpful, that everything that you would possibly say would be just really not the best thing to do. You know what you need to do in that case? When you open the door and they see you and you see them and the tears fill their eyes, and your eyes probably too, all you got to do is this, and just hug them. And then when you get done hugging them, say, I'm going to sit right here. And they say, oh, no, no, you don't have to stay. It's okay. No, I'm just going to, I'm just going to be. And just sit there in silence. You know how much that means to somebody? When you're just with them. Just with them. <clears throat> I think about Mary and Martha. Don't you 
don't you remember when Lazarus died and they were so broken? And that's what they thought Jesus was doing when he went to the tomb. Say, Martha, show me the grave. Lord, if you'd been here, he wouldn't have died. Martha told him to open it up. Oh, but Lord, we can't do that. It's going to stink. It's been four days. He said, I said, open it up. And then all of a sudden, he calls out Lazarus' name. So ministry of presence many times is what you need to be doing. Now sometimes, now they have to really know that you care about them and that you love them for this to take place. And I wouldn't advise doing this unless God says do it. But every now and then, when someone's in sin, the Lord's going to lead you to call out their sin and to say, now you know that's wrong and if the Lord ever leads you to do it, don't flip out. Just do what God said to do. And then, as uh, Brother Buckley told me down in Columbia, Mississippi, he said, say what God said to say, then sit down and shut up. And he had long fingers. Sit down and shut up. And that's what we need to be doing, is just get out of the way and let God. And you know what the best way to tell them about their sin might be? is when you're reading Scripture to them, at some point, find one of those passages that the Lord ever says, okay, now, now tell them about their sin. Read a passage to them. Let them hear it in Scripture. And let God's Word tell them that it's sin. Just get out of the way. So sometimes it's calling people out. But remember the reason that we have to, they have to know that we love them. Otherwise, They'll get on the defensive, and then, then it's just no good. No good at all. And then we, once again, we just should have kept quiet. But we've got to show people that we love them. Got to go to care. And sometimes we need to get down. It, it's, a, it's a patience thing that we have to be patient with them, that they're going through something. And that we just need, it's kind of like what I was saying a minute ago, the ministry of presence and that you're being with them, but you don't need to get into the muck with them. Does this make any sense? I didn't say, because see, there's a passage in Scripture that says that Jesus was eating and drinking with sinners and tax collectors. And so it looks like, on the surface, that he went out and went to the bar and he's eating and drinking with them. That's not what's going on. Remember the Luke passage that I preached on several weeks ago. The lost coin, the lost son, and the lost sheep. At the very beginning of that passage, remember at the end of the message, I came down here and I said, who was his audience? And I said that, and the Lord had told me to read the passage again. It's at the very beginning of the passage in the book of Luke. And what it says there is that the tax collectors and the sinners came to Jesus and Jesus was ridiculed by the Pharisees and the scribes. So what's going on here? This is the picture. It would be like the sinners out here at the back door saying, we want to come in and be saved. And as if the people that were in leadership in the church went up there and shut the doors and locked them and said, oh no, y'all can't, we don't want your kind in here. And then the, then the picture that's going on in that passage is the Lord Jesus is telling the leaders, no, all are welcome. If these people want to come home, they are more than welcome to come home and be saved. That's what was going on. It's not like he's getting down in the book with them. But sometimes we need to be a presence for them, be patient. Remember I told you we talked about patience. That we need to be patient with them in the midst of what they're going through. So let's just say they're going through this phase of bad sin. I didn't say go to the brothel with them. But what I did say is that maybe you need to call them up. Right, Mr. Gunn? Call them up and say, hello. I just want to check on you. Well, I'm doing fine. Why do you think I need to hear from you? 
I just want to tell you that I love you and I'm praying for you. I just want to see what you're doing. So where are you? And they say what they're doing and maybe they say, oh, okay. Well, this is what I do today and just talk to them and say, well, see you later. Keeping up with them. But it may not be sin. It may be that they're just going through a terrible time. You know, I know a fellow who he was in our United Methodist Church and he, he's got two master's degrees. Two master's. And he's a pretty good preacher. But he's not mature. He never matured. And so uh, he ended up getting on the outs with the churches and finally the bishop and the cabinet just totally threw him out. You know, I mean, that's just what happened. And so, through the years, I call him about once a month or twice, or once every two months or something, just to check on him. And he's not doing real well, and he hasn't done it really well. But you know what he told me one time, and this has been several years later now, is he one day told me, he said, Ron, you were the only one that still checks on me. Thank you. So it's being with the person, having patience with the person. And I'm working on him. I think we'll see him mature one of these days and get back into the church and be a preacher. Because he is called. There's no question. But he just got to mature some. Hey, he might mature when he's 50, 60, 70 years old. It ain't no telling. But you know what? God can work with that. How many in Scripture were older when God called them to go do for the Lord? If you don't believe some were old when they started their ministry, Go back and read about Noah. He was an old man before he got started. Good. Moses wasn't a spring chicken when he led the children of Israel out of Egypt either. You know. So it, the Lord's working with him. So whatever level that you see people at, or you see people in their midst. Be with them and show love to others and have love for God. Loving God, loving each other. Paul says, we see in the mirror dimly, but then we'll see face to face. So we need to love Jesus, reflect Jesus. We started well, make sure we finish well. Let it be said. And then the Lord Jesus will say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Our hymn of invitation is hymn number 483. The Savior is waiting. Let's sing both verses. Hymn number 483.
pray this for you. Lord Jesus, I just turn this over to you, Lord. And God, I pray that you will just fill me with your grace. I want to be right with you from this moment forward. Lord, I pray that you'll touch each person today as we go forth from this place. That you fill us with your grace and your peace and your anointing. And Lord, that we go forth from here that we're able to finish well. Lord, that we don't know when our finishing date is. But Lord, whenever that is, I pray that we finish well in Jesus' name.